morning I'm Kay Spivey so I had actually made this kind of coffee mousse foam that only uses three ingredients back when any made in Japan first made it because I was like that is so cool so I tried it again and it worked really well it came out really thick and now I'm gonna try it I guess they're calling it a Delgoda coffee cream and now it's all over everywhere so I had to try it again for myself here we go Mmm, that's good. We had to use uh, non-dairy creamer because we're both lactose intolerant and that's what we had. <laughs> it was either that or soy milk and I thought that would look a lot nicer on camera, so I said cool. But man, this is really good and so easy to make. All you do is just sit there and whip it and then it becomes this like beautiful thick mousse. Mmm. Hey, so I hadn't actually planned on making a riding vlog or anything today, writing vlog or anything today, but then I was really proud of myself because I went ahead and did some outlining for my NaNoWriMo novel, the one I wrote last year, the moon painting one. I decided to try and use Jenna Marassi's method of writing down all the key like conflict points on a sticky note. So I went through and I just, without reading the manuscript, thought about every... Ooh. I was trying to keep the bed out of the picture. Here we go. <laughs> just because it's a mess. I just haven't cleaned anything. Anyway, so I thought through every single point that like I remembered writing like all of the key scenes that I enjoyed writing or that I thought were really good or that like actually drove the plot. So I wrote all of them down and then I laid them out and kind of figured out where the big conflict points needed to be and like what order they should probably be in. And I think this story is going to need to have a part of it as a prologue. There's part of it that kind of like reveals why he's trapped in the painting. And I thought about having that as a conflict point, which is where I think I wrote it initially when I was just writing the rough draft. But I think, I think it has to be a prologue. I think it doesn't make much sense to have that part be later, even though he kind of thinks back to things that happened in the past as well. And I'm kind of trying to match them together. The two big problems I'm having is I don't actually read a lot of romance or a lot of paranormal that's not manga. And manga is structured so differently. Like I read those genres and I like to watch movies in those genres, but I don't actually read a lot of novels that are either romance or paranormal. And this is a paranormal gay romance. So I can't really structure it quite the same way as manga. And so I don't know what like very common conflict points are in either romance or in paranormal that are just like, like not tropey exactly, but like, yeah, tropey, like really common, big major conflict points that I could then kind of use. Cause the, the one thing I'll, I'll show you what my board looks like, even though this room is a mess and I just put it on the, the Christmas tree box on the floor right now, but I'm still proud of it, even though it's not like lined up really nicely or anything. I should put it on the wall or something. That would have been more impressive. Oh, well, it's on the floor. You have to deal with it. A couple of them just say like conflict enacted, conflict mitigated, because I don't know what the conflict is going to be, but I've got all of the major points now laid out. I'm just going to show you. So you can see it kind of it goes like this. I'm gonna go quickly so you can't read what all happens in the story. And then this would be kind of the, the next act. I guess it's sort of broken down into a two act structure. I don't know. Three acts is kind of like the way because it's like it's Shakespeare. It's how plays are made. But uh, I'm a little more of a 
two main act kind of person. I guess there's always like there's the first main climax and then the second main climax and I feel like that makes for a really interesting story with then of course little conflicts going on in between but I felt like that was really this feels solid if I can just wrap my head around what the conflict is going to be and then have Ash make a choice because depending upon the conflict I feel like his two main options that I sort of waffled about writing the initial draft and never really came up with not Ash sorry fire their names are Ash and Fire. <laughs> this is a rough draft. I'm probably gonna change Fire's name. I'm not sure. But anyway, no, I'm not gonna change Ash's name. I really like that. I love that name. For guys or girls, love it. He either is gonna have to choose and they're gonna have to find a way to send him back to his own time, which is way in the past, or he's gonna have to choose to break free of the curse and live in the modern world. And I didn't really come to a decision on that because he lived a long time ago. He learned he lived pre-technology. So it's a big change for him coming here. And he barely knows Ash even by the end um, because of the way I decided to do it. I want it to be very Swan Lake. So he can only come out of the painting during the full moon. And that's it. And I decided that was it. it. And I kind of waffled about whether or not he could see out of the painting during other times. I was doing yes, but maybe no. That's where I'm at right now. I'm kind of, I have Sunday and Monday off today. I'm not leaving the house, obviously, because of the coronavirus. So I'm going to try and get some good writing time in, and I'm going to try and really think hard on, like, what the conflict point is going to be. But, like, any tips, please let me know. Or any book recommendations there are already paranormal gay romances. I would love to add this to my list because I'm going to be doing a lot more reading this summer. I have structured it into my day. I'm going to try and read a lot this summer. Let me give you a little tiny update on my garden. A little sprout coming up. Oh, there's two of them. These are the peas. So they're already coming up happy. Nothing really happening with anything else except for the spinach has these things. Now I'm not sure those are spinach sprouts actually. I'm wondering if the birds put something into the spinach pot but so far I've at least got two little ones I was worried because the the temperature got a lot colder all of a sudden around here it was like we were past our last frost and then the temperature started getting colder which I think is actually a good thing I think it's that climate change is kind of slowing down just because everyone's staying home there's not as many greenhouse gases which like it's a good thing but also <laughs> it made the timing of my planting a little weird so I'm not sure the tomato seeds are gonna make it I might have to replant in a month or so and then have really late tomatoes but we'll see mm. and my second one of these this time with soy milk and I put it in a fancier glass so I could take some Instagram photos it was definitely better with the non-dairy creamer because that's so rich I think the richer it is the better but the soy milk also kind of like changes the flavor a little bit Man, this is good. This is a good way to do an iced coffee, the little Dalgona coffee, so. No wonder it's become kind of a fun trend. It's like three ingredients and it only takes as long as it takes until it fluffs up. Like, so simple. Mmm. Yum. Okay, so what am I doing today? Before I even start, you, my YouTube subscription feed is so full of live streams. Like, I don't normally, I'm just not as into live streams. It's just not like my thing. It's not what I wanted out of YouTube videos, even though I've watched a few and I've really loved some of them. Some people just have like a knack for that kind of like candid talking and some people don't. Even if I was home all the time and it wasn't still working, which I am, and even if I enjoyed live streams, like there's too many. It's just constant. It's like everybody all day has like four or five hour live streams. Like I can't sit in on a four hour live stream. I have things to do. I don't know if like if people just put it in the background, but then you have like a four hour live stream going and then like five two hour live streams pop up all at the same time and then one schedules for later. It's like all day you could be live streaming or you could miss all of your favorite live streamers because you're trying to watch one live stream. It's just like, it's too much. There's so many live streams. So like, I won't be live streaming during this court. I mean, I, I guess I should never say never because it could change, but like all hours of the day, but I'm looking like people I'd really like to see their videos have these enormously long live streams. I'm like, I got time for that. Oh man. Anyway, a lot of them are like write-ins because I follow so many author tubers, but 
people just doing things or just like having chats and things and it's like normally I'd enjoy that content but like not in live stream format some of those are only fun if you can be part of the live stream and like joining in anyway I don't know I don't know Mostly I'm just overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed with how many live streams are showing up in my subscription box just constantly, every day. Personal peeve, I guess. So I worked on some brainstorming and some structuring for my novel. I'm gonna do some more of that. But first, it is National Poetry Month, so I am gonna be working on some poems. I'm actually, I'm a day behind, but don't tell anyone, because I will catch up today and write two poems. And then I've been completely neglecting to go on the terrible NaNoWriMo website and update my word count, my poem count. So I'll go and do that. I'll get myself updated. We're on day five. I will update it to five poems having been written after I write these two. So that's what I'm going to be doing now. I'll go ahead and read what I wrote for my first one. Keeping in mind that this is a rough draft of a poem, so here you're getting into the just like train of thought, first draft poetry. Here we go. There were blossoms this year allowed to fall to the ground and lay, which is a sad metaphor for sickness and death, and a happy metaphor for life and nature thriving. Allow it to be both in this day of wild uncertainty, allow dichotomy, two sides to all things. Life and death have always existed as equals, though we pin them against each other, declare them rivals, it does not make them so. Life finds its way through death, and death follows along and takes its chances. The blossoms open and fall, watched or not. Perhaps the creatures who would hide away watch them in our stead. Perhaps the blossoms prefer to bloom, unwatched by anyone. So that's my first poem. I will write my second poem and then update the website and then check back in with you. Okay, we are all updated. So now it shows that I've written five poems in five days, even though two of them were all the same day. Nobody but you and me need to know that. So now it's lunchtime. I'm going to go ahead and get some lunch and probably switch over to tea. I think a nice honey lemon tea just sounds nice. It's kind of a gray day here today. It's not super cold. Good stay at home weather, yes. I'm going to get my tea, get my lunch, and then I have to decide if I'm going to work on the Fire Emblem video that I've kind of been working on. I sort of, it was really fun to make and then I lost my motivation for editing it and putting it together. And I'm not sure it's gonna make that interesting of a video still. It just kind of me going over all of the characters and I don't know that it's that good. I think maybe I'll just start editing this vlog and see where I go from there instead. I feel like it's gonna be more interesting content for this channel. But anyway, lunchtime. Hi Pi. I had to go to the vet with me the other day because he keeps scratching the same ear and I can't see anything in it and he's had flea medication so we went in and none of us can figure out what's wrong. Pi doesn't even seem to know what's wrong. He just is itching it so he got an allergy shot and hopefully that'll be okay but I'm gonna keep an eye on him. He didn't itch after he got the allergy shot so like all right I've got my honey lemon tea. I worked on writing for a little while think I'm pretty done with the little prologue section which might still be chapter one I can't decide it sort of sets everything up and then we get into the story and the romance and all of that but because of the way it's paranormal it kind of needs the setup so I'm not totally sure if it's going to end up being a prologue or not it's still being decided this is only the first revision, so I'm working on that. But I thought I would come sit down and sort of wrap up the vlog for today because I think I'm gonna go 
Actually, I know what I'm gonna do. Jenna and Julian had a podcast about Tiger King and I just finished watching Tiger King last night and oh boy, I would have watched it sooner if anyone had told me that this like had to do with Big Cat Rescue, who I'm a big fan of. I have so many opinions. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know like what to get into. My husband and I talked about it a whole lot. I think I'm gonna watch Jen and Julian's opinion about it. I don't know, like I'd be happy to, <laughs> if someone wants to do a collab just like, talking about Tiger King with me, I'm down. Cause, ooh, that was a can of worms and I'm all about a good conspiracy, but like it went so many places and I was like, <gasps> I don't, it was weird. Cause it almost painted the Tiger King in the best light, but at the same time, Carol ended up seeming pretty normal to me, but my husband thought she was painted in a terrible light. And so I was just like, so, so interesting. Anyway. I might go also watch the Taylor Swift documentary, or is it even a documentary? I don't know. I'm gonna just watch some things tonight because I, I did my writing for today and I think I deserve it. And sometimes you just gotta kind of relax. I was going to see about doing some more cooking because I know like a lot of people are doing bread. I love making bread. Bread is a lot of fun to make, but I also, <laughs> my husband's gone back to, he's working now. He's working at a park and it's not that far from here but during the week he's back there and then here over the weekend kind of is what we're doing this year because it's not that far away so I'm staying here. But so he's back at that and it's kind of like I don't want to make a whole loaf of bread for just me. So I'm not going to make one now. I'll maybe make one next weekend because I do love making bread. But so it's not going to be in this video. And I was thinking maybe I'd show you what I was eating for dinner but I think I'm going to eat leftovers also. My husband made a nice big thing of chicken rice and I know I'm not eating much eat right now but like I am gonna eat homemade chicken rice because it's real good. I'm gonna be doing that. This is actually very hot tea. I just poured it. I need to put it down. Ooh. I wanted to hold it but it is too hot still. <laughs> uh, so I'm gonna probably have that for dinner and not do what I'm having for dinner kind of part to this video. I don't know if it's that helpful to you guys. You're already, those of you who have been stuck at home have now been stuck at home for a little while. So like maybe you're going stir crazy, but there are a lot of videos out there on like what to do with your kitchen condiments. Although I feel like those are terrible. Honestly, you know what you do when you have certain ingredients in your cupboard? Now this works better when you can go to the grocery store obviously, but go to Pinterest and type in what you have. That is the best way. You can also be like beans, vegetarian dinner or something like that. That's a really good way to find recipes with kind of within the constraints of your kitchen. And honestly, if you happen to have enough seasonings built up in your kitchen, you're probably gonna be okay. If you're the type who doesn't, if you've never cooked for yourself before, and it's really hard, cause I know eating out, even if you're taking it home, is hard at this time, especially if you don't happen to be working, start small. If what you can handle is heating up some pasta and pouring sauce over it. Heat up some pasta today, pour some sauce over it, and maybe add some cheese today. But tomorrow, maybe add some spice. You know, start small, give yourself something different, try and eat things that are different, and do not forget to open up your windows. Even if it's a little bit cold, make sure that you are getting a big old gulp of fresh air every day, and that's gonna help a lot. I think I'm going to end this video by attaching a sort of segment from the end of the Fire Emblem video that I did where I sort of talked about just generally coronavirus stuff because I think it's useful information and I think it's helpful. And I'm also going to go ahead and probably link up above my penny pinching tips video, which I did quite a while back, but maybe that would help some of you who are struggling and who are gonna be struggling for a while. A lot of it has to do with the way that you shop, which I know isn't helpful, but I'll just go ahead and link it anyway. I might try and do some more cooking things. The Dalgona coffee thing was pretty fun. I enjoyed that. And I don't mind doing some other things because I do enjoy cooking. I'm just not gonna be doing it tonight because I already have leftovers. And don't forget to eat your leftovers. Leftovers are very important in a time like this. So I will go ahead and I will skip to that video. This will be my little PSA, I guess. If you were out there in the quarantine stuck with your pet and you're just sitting there with your pet being like, man, we should really get that one little thing looked at that's been bothering me, just stay home for right now. Even if you have vaccines coming due, if they're just due like sometime this month or sometime in the next month, hold off on them. Especially if you're staying indoors, you're not going to boarding grooming or something. 
let the veterinary clinics deal with the emergencies so that we are also contacting fewer people. The fewer people that we're contacting, the better. And so even though, yes, you're here with your pets and yes, they are important, they're just as important, let us focus on the emergency ones. There are pets still getting sick and hurt every day. And if we're full up on people coming in for just vaccines, toenail trims, uh, just to check lumps and things like that, then there's not really enough room to have people also coming in for emergencies. There's gonna be longer wait times. We're gonna be contacting a lot more people. There's gonna be a lot more risk of spread. If there are a lot of people coming into the clinic over and over, when is our time to really deep clean? So give us that time, come in at your scheduled appointment times and hold off. If it's something you can hold off on, obviously if it's not, if there's blood, vomiting, you know, things to really be concerned about, give a, give your veterinary clinic a call. But otherwise, try and stay in with your pets. The best thing you can do is stay calm and they're gonna stay calm and all just be safe during this quarantine period. Thanks for joining me today and hopefully you enjoyed this kind of writing vlog and the coffee vlog. Gotta get in those viral moments, you know. Hopefully you're staying safe and good luck to all of us. Bye.